Hello everyone, my name is Jason Gregerson. In this video we're going to introduce the idea of an orthogonal basis. So before we've talked about orthogonality of vectors and even a vector to a set, but now we want to build up the idea of an orthogonal basis. So we'll work through a couple definitions before we define orthogonal basis, and then we'll talk about why orthogonal bases are important and useful. Our first definition will be for an orthogonal set. Once again, we've already talked about orthogonality between vectors, and even how a vector can be orthogonal to a set. But now, what is an actual orthogonal set? Well, the definition says it's a set of vectors where each vector is orthogonal to every other vector in the set. So in other words, if we have a set of vectors, u1, u2, and u3, for instance, this would be a set of vectors. But this would be, the set would be an orthogonal set if and only if u1 is orthogonal to u2 and u1 is orthogonal to u3 and u2 is orthogonal to u3. So they all have to be orthogonal to each other. Now one of the reasons that this type of set is so special is because orthogonal vectors are also linearly independent. So if I have a set of vectors that is or an orthogonal set, that would also have to be a linearly independent set. Now why is that true? Well, let's think about it this way. If the zero vector is equal to some constant times u1 plus some constant times u2 plus some constant times u3, now these are only linearly independent if this vector equation has only the trivial solution. In other words, the only way this would be true is if c1 is equal to 0, c2, and c3. They have to be actually all be equal to 0. Well, let's kind of check on this. Well, if we look at this expression, and if I take the dot product of u1 dotted with the 0 vector, well, that should be the same thing as u1 dotted with this expression here. But because the dot product distributes over addition, and also because scalar multiplication is associated with the dot product, then I can rewrite this as, as this. But because this is an orthogonal set, u1 dotted with u2 is equal to 0, and u1 dotted with u3 is equal to 0. And so u1 dotted with 0 is always equal to 0 by definition. So this would tell me that the 0 is equal to c1 times the magnitude of u1, that magnitude squared. But we have to first take the fact that these u1, u2, and u3 are all non-zero vectors. Now, if they're non-zero vectors, then this cannot be equal to 0. It has to be strictly greater than or equal to 0 if u1 is not actually equal to 0. And if that's true, that would tell me that c1 is equal to 0. So this would tell me c1 has to be equal to 0. And to show that c2 and c3 are also equal to 0, I would just take the dot product of u2 and u3 and show this exact same thing. And the result would be that this is only true, that this equation is only true if c1 is equal to 0, c2 is equal to 0, and c3 is equal to 0, which tells me that these vectors are linearly independent. So this is just a quick justification that if we have an orthogonal set, those vectors are linearly independent. And why is that important? Well, if they're linearly independent, then whatever space they span, those vectors, that this would be a basis for that space. So that will lead us into our next definition for an orthogonal basis. So an orthogonal basis is a basis that is also an orthogonal set. So the definition is pretty straightforward. So let's do a quick application. Is this set of vectors an orthogonal basis for R3? Well, we can see that it certainly is a basis for R3. If I formed a matrix that had these as its columns, I could see that there is already an REF, and there would be a pivot position in every row and column, which tells me that it's onto R3, and it's also, they're all linearly independent. But the real question is, is it an orthogonal basis? Well, if I call these a B1 vector, a B2 vector, and a B3 vector as the vectors in my basis, and I looked at B1 dotted with B2, for instance, well, that dot product would be 1 times 1 plus 0 times 1 plus 0 times 0, which would be a value of 1. That tells me that b1 and b2 are not perpendicular. They're not orthogonal. So this can't be an orthogonal basis. Now, if I looked at a different basis, for instance, if I looked at 
the basis where I have these as my basis vectors. Now I can see that if I took b1 dotted with b2, I would get 0. And if I took b1 dotted with b3, I would also get 0. And if I took b2 dotted with b3, I would also get 0. So this would be an orthogonal basis for R3. So now we can see what an orthogonal basis is. Why? Why are they important? So why an orthogonal basis? Well, a basis is a special thing because it gives us a unique representation for every vector in our vector space. So if I have a basis, b1, b2, dot, 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 bn, as a basis for Rn here, then no matter what vector I have in Rn, in Rn. I can represent it uniquely as a linear combination of my basis vectors. So there's only one set of C1, C2, all the way to Cn that make this equation true. Now what does an orthogonal basis do? It gives us an easy way to find out what these coefficients are. In general, they can be hard to figure out depending on our basis to find the actual weightings of each basis vector that actually give us to V. But if this is an orthogonal basis, we can have a neat little trick that will actually calculate these coefficients for us. So for instance, I understand that I know what V is, and I know what all my basis vectors are. I just don't know what these C values are. But if I take the dot product of B1 dot V, that's a value I can calculate. But if I look at the other side of this equation, this would be B1 dotted with this whole expression. And once again, because it distributes over addition, and I have the associative property of scalar multiplication, this would look like. And then because this is an orthogonal basis, this would be equal to 0. And every other one in between would be equal to 0. The only one that would not be equal to be 0 would be this very first one. And that would be C1 times B1 dotted with B1. That would be the only one that would be left. And now I really have to just solve this for C1. Now remember, this dot product of B1 dot with B1, that's just a real number, because that's what my inner product does. It just outputs a real number. So I can divide by that real number. And so if I did that, and I solve this for C1, I would get C1 is equal to B1 dotted with a V divided by whatever that dot product was, B1 dotted with itself. So this would represent an expression for that first constant. And I can do that same process to find C2, except instead of taking B1 dotted with V, I would take B2 dotted with V. And the result would be B2 dot V, B2 dot B2. And so I could generate a formula like this for each one of my coefficients. So we can see here that the value of the orthogonal basis is it gives me a systematic way to calculate the coefficients, the weightings of the basis vectors, for any vector in my vector space. All right, so we've introduced what an orthogonal basis is and why they're so special. And that concludes this video. Thank you.